you can see it here. And the reason that we use this welding rod is because each rod is copper coated and each rod is more or less insulated to break up the current in the coil, the eddy currents. Okay. So that we don't get a big heating effect. So everybody that built a monopole motor that used just an iron bolt is making a big mistake. And you see that all over the internet. Yeah. You see people just that, uh, just take a bolt because down. they're too lazy to yeah. cut the welding rod or find the material to build the machine right. Right. So when they fail, yeah. they only fail because of their own laziness mm -hmm. in, in building the system. Are there any incomprehension so, in, in of it? Right, so yeah. something very special here is this coil yeah. and the two slaves because all three of them are identically going to do the same thing. All right, what's going to happen when we start this motor is there's a timing mechanism on the other side over there. Okay. And each one of those magnets on the wheel on the other side corresponds to each magnet on this wheel. All right. Yeah. All right, now you're saying to yourself, John, why? Yeah, can, do the magnets actually talk to each other at that distance? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> because if you took a line of magnets, it's very simple. Sometimes it's hard to see, sometimes it's simple to see. If you take the two magnets, right? This is like dominoes. Mm -hmm. So if they're all spaced evenly, you move one, the other one moves. The other one wants to move, see? Oh, so they're pushing each other apart right like now. Yeah. Well, well, this is a monopole. Remember, it's a monopole. So all north poles facing out, okay. right? The magnet you see in the back at that angle shapes the magnetic field as because the magnetic field wants to come around the magnet you know like like this okay yeah like two circles on the side right so what we want to do is we want to pull the north pole in very quickly towards this neo magnet that's on the top now, Howard Johnson did that for a simple reason. is because when you put two different materials together in the magnet, you cause a switch to take place in the magnet, in the field. Mm -hmm. They don't teach you that in physics. You're not going to learn that in electromagnetism or with those kind of materials. I'm sure somebody knows, mm -hmm. but the world doesn't. Yeah. All right. So, what we have is a permanent magnet field right here. And we have an electromagnet here, an electromagnet here. And what the whole purpose of this machine is, is to run on a sort of scalar potential. Because these magnets aren't very big in proportionate to the wheel. Right. They're not real big, right? But they seem very big in proportion to the timing ones on the other side. Yeah, yeah, but the timing ones are much more, right. But the magnets in this wheel overpower the magnets in this wheel. Okay. And you'll notice that these magnets are in between the spokes for 10 of them. Yeah, yeah. All right. What's going to take place here is what we want to do is everything that the machine's doing work-wise, supplying energy, mm -hmm. we want to recover every bit of energy and more. So we want to go above their level. We want to go past 100%. So how do we accomplish that, right? By shaping the fields and that's what oh, okay. these metal plates are here. This is actually shaping 
the electromagnet magnetic field to make it into a little bit wider flame. So, so how do you know the angle to put those? By out? tuning the machine, by watching the speed of the machine. Oh, okay. So it's all trial and error. Well, it's it's a knack for yeah. tuning the machine. Right. Not everybody is going to be able to do this. Yeah. And not everybody is going to be able to understand yeah. what the machine, how the, the machine yeah, functions. What, what I meant was you don't go to a book and say, okay, if it's this big and you need this angle. Or there is no book on right? this, Pat. <laughs> yeah. You know, and if anybody wrote the book, it's Tom Bearden. Yeah. So okay. there's your credit again. Mm -hmm. So here's a man that meticulously searched night after night, night after night, night after night, through all kinds of reference material, and picked out one little bitty thing mm -hmm. that's hidden in some book somewhere. Yeah. And he wrote about it. I mean, there's thousands of pages yeah, on Tom Bearden. And you read this stuff and you sort of scratch your head and you go, no electrical engineer will read it. Mm -hmm. Some physicists will read it and go, well, maybe the guy has an idea. But if I work on that, I'm not going to get any funding. Yeah. So Tom, all these years, has probably done it without very much funding, like everybody else. Yeah. Because you can't get anybody to invest in anything that's going to do this. So, what we want to create is three magic windows. Three. We want, these windows are open right now, so everything surrounding us is all in different vectors. This way, that way, this way, this way, that way, right? It's already there. What we want to do is cause a compression cycle. So, when we flip this switch on, we want three compression cycles. Okay. We want three compression cycles that are going to bump three magnetic fields all at the same time. Magnetic field one, two, and three. Okay. Because they're going to they're going to want to spread out. We want as this one is collapsing and flipping to bump this field that's going the other direction. Okay. And this one to bump the other direction. Okay. Even though we're kicking out. See, there's a spacing geometry here. You notice that this coil is in further on the wheel, and this one's further out, if you look. What do you mean it's in further? It's in further. Oh, it's, the, this one's closer to center than this one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is. Huh. Yeah, because we want to bump three stages. Right. You follow me? Yeah, I see that now. That one's, yeah, it's much better. Yeah. Than yeah. yeah, and we want to shape the center one to make it just go in the shape from the pole. It's going to bump this magnet, see, which has another magnetic field. So what we want to do is we want to cause this nonlinear action because what we want to do is we want to capture everything that surrounds the coil, fill the capacitor, yeah. and dump it to these batteries. And so what we want to dump, Pat, is about 14 joules times three. It's 42 joules. Right. Yeah. Times 60 seconds, times 60 right. minutes. All right, too much. Yeah, <laughs> all right. So when we fire the machine, we're going to bump it. We're going to cause it to bump, and then I'm going to show you some things about the machine that are different. And so what you want to pay close attention to is when we start the machine, you can see here that here's our output current, right? Okay. And our battery, and this is our input current. Okay. See? But in, so what you're seeing here, this is the energy going to the output battery, so right. what's it doing? 
climbing. Yeah. And this is speeding up. Yes. And notice this is starting to climb. Uh -huh, yeah. So what we want is we're at about 1.2 amps there and we're about 2.1 amps there right now because the batteries are pretty much charged mm -hmm. from us running the machine. So all you need to do is take this current, divide it into that current, and the machine's at about two to one right now. Now as these batteries start to climb more and more, they're, they're gonna boil off. So the machine is made to taper the charge. So that the charge goes up high when these are down low. A lot oh, of current. Just like the pendulum did? Yes. Like the lower thing, the, the yes. speedy thing. Yeah. That. And so if we let it go for a little while, you can see what's going to happen. It's just going to start climbing up. You can see on this meter that when it's in the down position, this is your recovery mode, you're already way into the yeah. charge range. And this one is C-stable, right? pretty much. Yeah. This indicates now that the machine is on mm -hmm. because the position of the switch. Okay. So if we turn that off, we don't burn any energy. We get everything out of the coils. And What's going to happen is it's going to accelerate to, I think, about 18 RPM here. Looks like about 17 or 18. And that white dot that you see there, mm -hmm. right? I was wondering about you that. You asked about That's a timing. That's for timing. Okay. So if you set this, let's just say we didn't have a, uh, uh, an RPM gauge, right? Mm -hmm. So we'd set that to one minute, right? And we wait for that dot to come around. And bang, now count them. Mm -hmm. And that'll tell you how many RPMs okay, it's yeah. doing in one minute, all right? So I think it's what, a two, three, three now? Yeah, it's four. Yeah, four, okay, five, five six, six, seven. seven. Seventeen. Seventeen point five. Yeah. Okay. So All it's right. doing seventeen and a half RPM in a minute hmm. with a lot of torque. Because remember what I said. You've got this lever way right. out here at six feet. Right. And this there's tremendous torque there right now because you've rotated this. 300 to 400 pound mass up to that many RPMs. So look at the surface speed if you watch it going around. Pretty quick. Yeah. If you look at that, it hardly moves. But <laughs> right. Yeah. So if we tell it, see how we're tapering off on charge? Now we're starting to really taper off. Yeah. Well, it's see? Busy yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can see. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's charging pretty quick with this current. So, pretty soon it'll be at 40 and then be at 41 and then pretty soon it'll be at 43 and these these batteries are boiling at 14.8 volts. 
or 14.5 volts. Your car doesn't like to 